the Committee on Environment, Land, Agriculture, and Procurement Reform calls this oversight hearing to order. It is now two minutes after 2 p.m. on Wednesday, October 31st, 2018. Present with us today is um, Acting Speaker Therese Terlahi. The purpose of this oversight hearing is to receive information from the Guam Environmental Protection Agency concerning uh, Agent Orange testing, which uh, has been conducted or planned to be conducted in particular um, to, prov to receive information on the Quality Assurance Project Plan for testing uh, conducted on Anderson Air Force Base uh, to discuss the topic documents or the test results uh, in GIPA's possession that many that may indicate the presence of TCDD or polychlorinated dibenzon P dioxins in water or land in Guam. Third item is uh, for the Guam EPA recommendations for testing of unremediated areas and the details of plans to test for Agent Orange outside of the military bases. Uh, we will also be receiving information uh, regarding uncovered dump sites near the San, San Carlos Falls, um, specifically the findings to date and mitigation plans. Notice of this oversight hearing was provided to senators, stakeholders, and the local media as well as being published in the Guam Daily Post on October 24th, 2017 and October 29, 2017, thus meeting the requirements of the open government law. We will start then this oversight hearing and I'll go ahead and yield to the acting speaker to make her introductory remarks. Thank you very much. Um, as regards to the Agent Orange, I, I, I just want to very, very briefly, um, so that everyone who's listening can just um, also be on the same page, just briefly outline kind of the government of Guam's involvement that, that I'm aware of in regards to Agent Orange, but I understand that the Guam EPA has a, a longer history uh, of involvement with this, and so you can fill in what you think is relevant, but uh, just just so, um, just very briefly, I understand there was a GAO report back in 1987 that uh, was titled, Hazardous Waste Abandoned Disposal Sites May Be Affecting Guam's Water Supply. And in there, the Guam EPA is noted to have, um, you know, uh, pointed out that the report or the test, the cleanups did not include seven, 27 sites at that time. They excluded chemical storage areas, and um, and then in um, 2001, I guess there were, or, or when in relative to, with the BRAC Commission's uh, reports, there were some ASTDR reports that I understand are, were. Uh, regarding um, other areas that they had studied and, and what they had found there. So those reports, um, and in 2006, they had, um, we, we had knowledge, I, I think um, there was, uh, Robert Celestio had brought it to the legislature's attention that there, has, there was knowledge that there were two veterans who were receiving compensation for Agent Orange exposure on Guam. So that added to all those previous reports. The legislature in 2006 um, started a, their own local right to know, veterans right to know commission. And they were supposed to at that time study or you know, get information that they, all the information they could to confirm or not whether Agent Orange had been on Guam. I've been unable to find a report of this commission, but I'm, I'll continue to look. But so far, I haven't found a report. Um, I think in January 2017, 
the legislature formed an Agent Orange task force headed by Senator Fernando Estevez, and they were also supposed to compile a comprehensive survey and accounting of what, what all veterans testimonies might show as to whether there was um, Agent Orange on Guam. Uh, very s around the same time, January 19, the Governor Calvo ordered Guam EPA to test for traces of Agent Orange in the drinking water and soils where U.S. military veterans who served in the 1960s and 70s claimed the toxic chemical mixture had been sprayed. So in January 23, 2017, e Guam EPA very promptly responded that uh, they were calling, that they affirmed that they were going to do that, and they, they called for affidavits from veterans to pinpoint potentially affected areas and begin to discussion with their colleagues in the U.S. and with the Department of Defense. In February 2017, the Foster Act was introduced in the House of Representatives, which would have, uh, which was named after Representative Dennis Ross, Dennis Ross, sorry, I'm sorry, it was introduced by Representative Dennis Ross, named after uh, Foster, who has just recently passed away. But it was because of his testimony on his spraying of what he believes is Agent Orange on Guam while he was here. And um, so the Guam legislature passed a resolution 25-34 in support of that Foster Act, H.R. 809, um, which provides presumptive Agent Orange exposure status to Vietnam War era veterans who served in Guam and show symptoms of medical conditions currently associated with exposure to Agent Orange in order to receive U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs benefits and to seeking justice for veterans and civilians exposed to Agent Orange on Guam. Um, then uh, the Congresswoman and Congress was able to, to include in one of their statutes that the GAO would, would do a comprehensive report on Agent Orange and um, as part of their investigation, GAO came to Guam, took testimony from veterans here in Hawaii. They talked to us lawmakers. I'm sure they talked to, to government agencies at that time. We're still waiting for their report. They claim it will be in November, right? That's the latest response they gave us. All right, so that was... Um, and then um, it was in April of 2018. So. It took a little while, but it, it, April 2018 is when the uh, Guam EPA uh, made an agreement with um, Joint Region Marianas, Anderson Air Force Base contractor ACOM, and the U.S. EPA Region 9 uh, to, and they entered into this quality assurance project plan, which was the roadmap that laid out the methodology and logistics of sampling efforts on Anderson Air Force Base. So um, I guess if, what have, what have we been asking? And we, so we've been in correspondence and I want to acknowledge that the, 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 the Guam EPA, you know, I, I believe had been diligent, but I've been, um, one of the reasons I asked for the oversight hearing is because I just, I think that we, should bring the public along with all the knowledge that we have, all the plans that you have, so that they can, we can all just be assured and have confidence that uh, uh, you know you have the people of Guam's interests, um, and that there are no really there are no impediments to your sharing of that information with us. And I know that uh, I think that in the beginning that may have been a challenge, but I want to acknowledge that your efforts have to to release this information to the media has been, um, has lately, to me, very um, helpful. And, and the other, the other um, part, I guess I'll just talk about later, the, the PD, but to, to pretty much, yeah, I, I would just like for, to, to know what the plan was, what the plans are going forward, and what um, we can expect, you know, if, depending on the different results so that so that we can follow along and pe and rest assured and uh, I want to uh, make sure 
I, I guess I want to hear also from EPA what their assurances are for the public as to safety, as to whether these are reasonable timelines that we're following and things like that, just because it's been many, very many years and we're, we seem to have some action on it and so we want to help you if we can. So thank you, Mr. Chair. So at this time, I'm going to invite uh, the EPA Administrator, Mr. Walter Leon Guerrero, and you're certainly welcome to invite any of your staff uh, members that are here. So for the record, please identify yourself and the uh, staff members uh, with you at the table. Okay. My name is Walter S. Leon Guerrero. I am the Administrator of Guam EPA. Uh, to my right is Mr. Nick uh, Lee. He's the PIO and Acting Deputy when I'm not around. And Mr. Mike Cruz, who's in charge of the DESMOA, which is the Defense State Memorandum of Agreement Program, which enables us to conduct oversight over former and past cleanup sites. Okay. Go ahead. You have, you have, I mean, you have information to provide, of course. Sure. Um, and I guess I'll just follow um, how the oversight was laid out. Um, in regard to the QAP, to be quite honest, I, I would love to give it to you. Um, talking with our legal counsel and, and things of that nature, there's an agreement that the federal government had us abide to that basically says we can't share it. We asked Joint Region Marianas how we could get to the document and they basically informed us FOIA them and then they would be obliged to meet the FOIA request. We have it readily available and um, I don't know what would happen if I give it to you because it's a federal um, mandate and we have a copy of, of that this the verbiage that stipulates that we're not to share it uh, and how you can go about requesting it. Um, quite honestly, senators and, and speaker, I, 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 we don't have a problem sharing it, but we're, we're bound by the restrictions by the federal government at this point. And if there's something that you guys can do to make it easier for us to give it to you, we gladly will do so. Um, outside of that, I don't so, yes. so then, rest assured, uh, a FOIA will be sent to EPA uh, uh, before close of business today. Mr. Yes. Lee, did you have something? Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, the FOIA would have to go to uh, Joint Region Marianas. Uh, we, we don't own the document. So based on the agreement on how we receive it from uh, ARMDEC, uh, th there were conditions that we had to abide by. Uh, in order to uh, download the document. So uh, it, it implicitly states uh, distribution is limited to Guam EPA, US EPA, and uh, the Department of Navy personnel only. Uh, we've made requests with JRM on behalf of a uh, speaker uh, to release the document, and that's the instruction that we were given was that the, uh, the FOIA should be sent to Joint Region Marianas. Okay. Yeah, Chairman, so again, it's, it's not a Guam EPA decision. We are bounded by this decision by the stipulations that the federal government put on their document. So um, does that also then extend to that you cannot discuss whatever you know of what tests have been conducted? N not to my knowledge. We are open, uh, to op open discussion today with everything else. So we just can't hand you the document per se. So until the legislature has FOIA'd those documents, this is going to be basically an unproductive hearing? No, no, sir. We will, we will answer everything that we can, uh, and the information we have, we will freely give to you. Um, we just can't give you the document that describes the sampling event and what, what entailed up into the sampling event. Okay. All yes. right. Fine. Yes, I'm sir. sorry. I, I misunderstood. Yeah. But um, again, we apologize that we can't give you the quap at this point. Not a problem. Well, now that you've told us how to go about in obtaining the documents, uh, then then we'll we'll proceed down that path. Thank um, you. So. Okay. Well. Um, so I. I let's see. So. Okay. All right.
right, go ahead. Okay, uh, so wait, um, Mr. Mr. Sorry. Longer, so. Mr. Longer, could I just ask, so um, we know that you've done testing and we're going to talk about those tests, but what does the plan um, include? Does it include testing on the base only versus outside the base? Could you tell us generally sure. what the plan includes? Sure. So that, that initial clap was for testing at a, the based on affidavits that we received and, the informa and uh, knowledge of the base itself, was based, we, we tested the like, most likely area that the Agent Orange barrels, if, if we're on island, where they would be stored on, up in Anderson. And so that's where that crap specifically um, defines the work that we did. Now what we've done in addition to that is reached out to US EPA uh, to some of the people that I've known for many years, and I, uh, finding out that he, uh, a gentleman, Mr. Harry uh, Allen, who's done Agent Orange studies, investigations, both in the continental U.S., as well as sampling events in Vietnam. Um, so he, if anything, he's, he is the technical expertise, one of the few technical expertise that we could find in the United States, as well as Guam. So we reached out to him to be our technical expertise on, on our investigation in Guam. And in addition to that, because of his position, which is the on-scene coordinator um, team leader, I also, Guam EPA also requested that they come out and do sampling outside of the fence lines to help justify or determine if there was any Agent Orange use or storage outside of the fence lines between Naval Station um, and Anderson Air Force Base. And so currently in that part, we are working on our draft work plan. We had identified four sites, or actually five sites, but our draft work plan calls for four sites with five samples within each site. And the things that we're looking for is not just generally where people would spray, but generally where people would like park maybe the buffalo that has the, the product in it, and, and where there'd be sloshing and overspillage and uh, things of that nature versus just a daily spraying. So those, we identified four, five locations, and we will whittle it down to four this, at our present time because of uh, our budget constraints. But in addition to that, we also had a teleconference call with a, uh, a vet and, uh, yesterday and to try to get some additional information from him. Um, and he was willing to fly out and we just said, well, let's work on, you know, let's see if our sites jive with your sites to see if, if, if the way we read the affidavits are corrected and, and to the point of where the likelihood of Agent Orange may show up if it was stored or used there. So that's kind of where we're at in a, in a big shell right there. Yes. Uh, all right, so if we could go back. So there are two um, sets of testing going, going on. One was uh, it, this joint agreement that you made with US EPA, but also with Joint Region Marianas, and that's for testing, uh, and that's separate than the testing you just described with that you're you're going to conduct in partnership with US EPA on the four sites. That's correct. Outside they're, the fence. They're totally different uh, sampling events. Projects. Correct. Okay. So for, if we could go back to the project with the, with the Anderson Air Force Base for the sure. Joint Region. So um, is that project done? Can so, you explain what, what's going, what, what more is left in that project? And what, how many sites were tested? Uh, maybe explain, just explain only that part of this, okay. that, that project, the Anderson Air Force Base testing that you're doing Do you in conjunction with Joint Region yeah. Marianas. Okay, so my, uh, Mr. Mike Cruz is going to go into the details of the sampling plan. I can, I can exp explain further after what the results okay. turn up. Uh, good afternoon, Senators. Uh, thank you for uh, having Can you us bring on. the mic Thank you for having us here this morning. Thank you. Um, I, I apologize. Um, so the sampling event up at Anderson Air Force Base is not entirely over with yet. Um, based on the samples that were collected and the results that uh, we received, um, we are going back to the site again, the sites that we had sampled, and re-verify uh, whether or not um, Agent Orange or its constituents 
are present uh, in the soil. So currently we are working on, uh, with Joint Region uh, to, to, re to uh, update the QAP and get, uh, get the plans in order and get back out in the field again to continue testing of these three sites. Did you say three sites? It's three sites uh, based on testimony, the affidavits that uh, were, were provided to us by the uh, veterans. Okay, so three sites and they've all been tested and you're going to retest each yep. one? Okay. Yes. All right, and um, you were in agreement with the, the, the choice of methodology, the sampling methodology that they were going to use? Up yes, uh, yes, Senator. We were in agreement. We were in agreement, and uh, based on the uh, concurrence, also with our technical expert uh, assistance from uh, US EPA. Yeah. So, can I add to that? Then, uh, sure, speaker. So um, the sampling event did take place, uh, and it was it was a, it was based on the QAP, which was agreed upon by both Guam EPA, US EPA, and DOD. Um, when the sampling event took place, there was discrepancies between the lab results. Those discrepancies resulted in um, uh, DOD insisting that we do the same uh, sampling event again, um, just to try to, I guess, verify uh, which lab results were accurate or, or which one were erroneous. Um, at that point, both Guam EPA and US EPA uh, requested that uh, to do the same work again is almost a waste of time. Now, I understand you want to try to ensure that both uh, analysis are the same, but to do the same work again is like, uh, I don't know, to me is beating yourself on the head. Um, we can do that, we can meet those same results but also expand on at least the delineation of where the possible um, contamination may be if it exists. And so that is our proposal and that's where it is right now, is that instead of just doing the same thing, let's increase the, uh, the number of samples. Or, uh, uh, that way we can at least decrease the, the site where the possible contamination is. Uh, you know, if you, if you sample more, then you can pinpoint exactly where the contamination may be and that's that's where we're headed to on that side. Yes. Okay. And so what can we expect going forward? How long will that, are you, you haven't made an agreement yet. It sounds like you're still working on an agreement, negotiating. We're, we're, yes, that's, that's correct. Um, but I do know that they're working, uh, Joint Region is working on their contract to redo it. And um, I don't recall, do you, uh, when the targeted uh, sample dates are? Yeah. So yeah, until we, we rectify that. Um, but on the, on the good side, the sampling event that we have of US EPA and Guam EPA, and that uh, we have along the pipeline outside the fence line. Um, we're hoping to do it within the next couple of weeks. Um, we have a targeted date that's not confirmed, but if it's, and I'm gonna tell you right now, it's, it's, it's November 11th, that we're talking two and a half weeks out, or two weeks out. Um, we just need confirmation from, from one of the division directors in Region 9, and I'm pretty confident that we will get that. Uh, the problem, and again, uh, Speaker, you, you had mentioned that there's been uh, long time uh, lags, and I, and I admit to that. Um, some of the time lags for like this sampling outside the fence, like what we're gonna be doing in November, is the same team that's doing the sampling for us is the same team that responds to all Region 9 uh, emergencies. So if you recall, in the last year, we've had volcanoes blow up in Hawaii, we've had uh, typhoons come through. In fact, they were proposing to try to cancel our November 11th because of the typhoon that, that happened to hit Hawaii. I am in the midst of uh, dis having further discussions to ensure that our November 11th target date continues on. And um, I, I have strong faith that we will have that, that sampling event done that week, if not the week after.
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Leon Guerrero, you, and correct me if I'm wrong, you stated that there were discrepancies between lab results? That is correct. Uh, what were the finding of the results? So a lab showed that there was detection and then the other lab showed that there was non-detects. I'm sorry, can you just repeat that please? So one of the lab results showed detections. The other lab results showed non-detects, non-detects. So, so one of the lab results showed that there was a detection of? Of the components that we were sampling for, correct. Okay, which were? Um, the, the components are 24D okay, and 245T. T. Okay. Yeah. And they were from the same, same location, the exact same site? Correct. And 245T. Uh, is there a, um, I forget the scientific word, but is there a certain amount that is measured that is considered dangerous and was that shown or is that being tested for? We, we, did, we did not exceed any health concern levels, but we, what we structured this is just for the presence or non-presence of detection okay. or non-detection of it. Because yeah. even if we date back towards, back in time, the, the component potency changes the half-life of the Correct, the that, that, that would be something very difficult to, to forecast or Precast. Okay. I, don't, I don't know proper term of trying to figure out what was there in in, in the past. The, the one thing that should be noted is that DOD has stat, stood by the their word that uh, Agent Orange was never come has never come to Guam, and so our job at this point in this stage of our tiered approach to identifying if Agent Orange has been used on Guam is just the presence of of its. Uh, of the chemicals that, that comprise of it. And based on that, then we can further investigation to see how much was it used if, if that comes up positive. But yeah, for us, our first step in our tier approach is to show that it was used out here, if it was or if it wasn't used out here. Okay, yes. thank you. Yes. Um, the methodology that was used on Anderson Air Force Base, is that the same methodology you will be using with in conjunction with US EPA outside the base? Generally, yes. Um, we are gonna do some other um, parameters that uh, we'll look into um, potential. We're gonna factor in, um, because the pipeline, most of the pipeline was um, removed and an underground pipeline put in its place. So we're, we're trying to put in factors that would account for that and uh, look for it in in areas that uh, just not in a plane out there because they were so disturbed. And um, the, the scientific journals basically say Agent Orange and its components exposed to air and sunlight will break down in 30 days. Um, our, our technical expertise says he's found things that have been used since the 50s and the 40s, so he's not necessarily believing those t the scientific journals. And because of his background in that and, and being able to find it in, in like national parks in the United States and in Vietnam, he's using his institutional knowledge to try to make our sampling event very robust to ensure that we can try to capture anything that may be out there. Was the testing on Anderson then from uh, like how deep was that? Was that, was that uh, potentially exposed to the sun type of soil or it was soil, right? Yes. yes, Yes. in the soil and um, based on the, again, uh, the um, guidance that we've received from the, the uh, US EPA expert in this field, um, he suggested that, or he actually said that based on his experiences in various areas throughout the world, um, he's found it just like a couple inches below the surface and, and it's still there even after 30 days. Okay, I read with interest the, the press release where you described that, um, um, you know, the theory about it being bonded to the soil right. gives us a hope that we're going to find this, whereas if it wasn't, we wouldn't be able to find it. Okay. It, it's one of those double-edged swords, yes. speaker. Yes. You, you. 
I we hope see. it's hope, not been there. Hope but and not hope, yes, right? Yes. Right. Thank yes. you. Did did um. Can you just um, confirm? There were some concerns brought up when the testing pictures were put into to the media mm -hmm. that they were not wearing protective gear. How could that be if this is a, a hazardous material? Uh, could you just please explain that? Yeah. Um, that would be a, a health and safety issue, and that is something that is um, uh, p determined by the contractor. And you know, well. We're not necessarily in that area to to uh, give them advice on what to wear and what not to wear. Well, I'd like to. St uh, so we we followed the advice by the health safety officer. That's correct. But uh, knowing that it's been many years, much like Senator Nelson had brought up, um, that the. Um, concentration, if, 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 if present, would probably be de degraded quite a bit from if it were just spilled today. And that is probably when, of course, that's the likelihood of getting ill effects are when it's just being spilled or being utilized during that day or that week or that year. Um, whereas we know at least for the last 20, 30 years it's not been used here. And so we're we took that into account, and and I, and I believe the health and safety officers did that too, and so it was okay not to fully get dressed up in in uh, level C or level B uh, uh, containment suit um, because the exposure wouldn't be as great at this point in time. When you release the the okay, so now um, I'm satisfied at, with the regarding the. Department of Defense testing. Okay. I hope you'll let us know when you plan to pursue that, when that's agreed on and it was going to be going forward. Were there any other sites on Anderson that you think should be tested that 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 so, are not being tested? That so you, the, I mean, yes. that are um, right. big sites in your right. mind. So the so the area that was sampled was is a former former tank farm. Uh, barrel storage area, which is probably in the most likelihood, and as well as from the affidavits, which didn't pinpoint where the storage areas were, um, that's where we went with. Uh, the other locations that they recommended, which makes sense because using Agent Orange uh, outside of warfare basically is to, to defoliate the, the area. So the other areas that they that were picked up were fence lines, uh, flight lines and anywhere that constantly needed, um, uh, I guess, yeah, vegetation control, correct. And so instead of having someone manually go out there with a machete, because I don't think there was a lot of bush cutters around back in 1940s, uh, uh, 1940s, I may be wrong, but um, they decided if, like, like they did in other places, like in, in the National Park Services, they utilized the Agent Orange to to keep the foliage down. And it was an easier maintenance way than sending someone out every day to cut grass. Yes. So based on, um, based on um, what you did up at Anderson and what you're going to do up at Anderson, hopefully, yeah. when you retest, uh, based on the reports that you've seen, is, is that sufficient? Okay. Well, again, <sighs> I understand where you're going, the question, uh, Speaker, and, and for us, what we have to do is a tiered approach on this um, because we don't uh, have an unlimited budget, nor does anybody else, even though DOD has a deeper pockets than anybody else. Um, so what we're, again, um, I had mentioned earlier that the storage and we're uh, maybe the transfer from a big container to a small container where spills are, are more likely versus just the spraying because the spraying again has, has been noted by, yes. by this you vice, uh, uh, speaker and, and the two senators that yes if you spray and exposure is there then there, it may degrade faster and may not be there. So when you have spills and you have excessive amounts of the, uh, of, of the Agent Orange if, again, if it was being used hitting the ground 
then it would go deeper because the concentration or the amount of the volume in that one spot would be higher. So that is what the areas that we're looking for. And that's why it's, it, we're not ignoring the areas that may have been sprayed, but we're trying to target areas where there is higher concentrations or higher volumes of, of, of the agent or of the liquid being spilled onto the ground. Because then it'll go deeper into the soil, be more easier to, to be detected if it's there. So that is the reasoning behind looking for server, somewhere where it's stored versus just where it may have been applied. Go ahead. Yes, no, go ahead. All right, then um, we might go just a little out of order of this, but they're all related. It's kind of a circle. So, so okay, so for testing outside, then um, you've explained that you have four sites. Oh. It's going to begin November 11. You're going to test soil, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and you, you believe that to be the, the best methodology to use right now? Okay, yes, sir. Great. Yes, ma'am. And then you talked about the fuel line, and you were going to do some testing along the fuel line. Yes. And all these, these sites that you've chosen, those are consistent with, uh, I mean, based on recommendations by US EPA, your experts, but also are they consistent with what you've seen in the testimony by the veterans and, and prior documents of... Uh, maybe dump sites or things like that? Yes, we've, we've tried to take that into uh, uh, consideration. Again, uh, a common thread with the uh, affidavits basically were, you know, areas that required a, a vegetation control and outside of the bases besides the fence line and, and flight lines and, and fuel storage areas, the pipeline was one of the targeted ones. And so, the, tar the pipeline being, uh, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, 24 or 26 miles long. It's quite a long strip to, to sample for. So again, what we targeted is areas that maybe a buffalo with, with the liquid would pull up and the vets or the soldiers at the time would take the fuel, load up their backpack uh, sprayers or whatever mechanism, whether they sprayed it straight from the buffalo out, or there would be higher volumes of liquid hitting the ground in one spot. Again, that's what we looked for along the pipelines. All right. And the, the soil that was removed from when they replaced the fuel line and put right. it underground, is that some potential threat to, where did it go? Is that a potential threat to us? So I'm not, uh, I don't think a lot of soil was removed. I think what they did is they dug, they, you know, they, of course they had to, they laid a bed of um, rock that would be uniform so that the lines don't crack, but then they just covered the, the pipeline back with the soil and maybe even had at some points had to bring in soil to fill it in to grade. So I'm not aware, are you, that? Soil was removed from the pipeline. Yeah. Oh. Wait. It wasn't okay. transferred to the Luhan Hartfield facility. That, that's correct, oh. uh, Madam Speaker. So some of the soil that was not used for backfill or cover was uh, transported, as per our solid waste uh, regulations, uh, for for the permit for that work. So uh, there was a Hartfield facility that accepted. Um, the soil and that hard fill facility used that soil for top cover. Thank you. Will you be testing that soil or not? Not right now. You know, I, it, it doesn't appear that way okay. at, at this point, but um, mainly because we're not familiar with the, the operations of that hard fill and how they treat whatever is there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where on the compound we may be able to find that. Uh, so it's unlikely that we'd be testing that. We will, we will reach out to, to Luhan to, and see if, if they have it in a certain area and we will check into okay. that. If you take the test on November 11 or thereabouts, wh how long do you expect to get results and what would you be able to share with the public after that? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. If you take the test, mm -hmm. the samplings, uh, right. approximately November 11, mm -hmm. How long do you think it would take to get results, and would you be able to share the results with the public after that? So, generally, um, lab analysis will take anywhere from two to six weeks, um, depending on the expedited request and uh, 
This is funding that uh, US EPA is actually doing for us. Um, so I would need to engage them on the expedited, if there's going to be an expedited request. But uh, post the sampling, we will definitely share it with, with this house as well as the general public, yes. And that goes for the, uh, the finalized uh, sampling and analysis plan that is being drafted yeah. by US EPA. That will be made public as well. Yes. That's great. Yes. Thank you. You, that will, will, you will that not will need to FOIA us. That will show the it. sites yes. and your methodology. Yes. That's great. All right. Can, um, are there documents or test results already in Guam EPA's possession that may indicate the presence of um, Agent Orange on Guam? OK. So. So um, that's, that's, a tr that's a tricky question in the sense that a lot of the constituents that, that, are, that are sampled for for Agent Orange are also done in other, are also utilized in other herbicides. Um, so, but when you have a combination of them, then there's great, greater likelihood, especially if you have information that it was stored or utilized there, which is what the affidavits would do. So that's what we're looking at. Um, now, in regard to specifically looking for those constituents, we are in the process of. Um, we have lots of documentation and lots of sampling events that we coordinate, that we worked with, uh, both at Anderson, down at Naval Station, uh, NES, which is now Tizen. And so there's, there's a lot of data that we need to sort through. Uh, and we're in the process of, of trying to get that. It's, um, it's a very daunting task. I'm not saying that we're not able to do it. It just, um, you know, I guess like a, you know, um, legal aid can help an attorney by doing some of the work. We don't have things at that nature right now in our agency. So we have to do it in-house. So that would be like Mike himself, literally Mike himself looking through these documents and trying to put, uh, assimilate all that information at this point. Can I ask what, what it is, Mike, you would be looking for? Would you be looking for, you know, a report that shows 2,4-D? Or would you, or would you be looking for polychlorinated dibenzo-P-dioxins? Or what, what are we looking for in those reports specifically? I'm sorry. If I was or just the use yeah. of pesticides yeah. in general? Or? Should uh, my administrator task me to do that? Of course, that, that 2,4-D, 2,4-5-T are the components, uh, Silvex. Um, and I, I would be looking at it for it in, in our groundwater uh, results, our prior soil sampling results that uh, of, of any type that may be from uh, the GovGuam side or whether it be the federal government side. So those are the areas that I would be looking for. Uh, um, to find or try to locate these uh, compounds or components. So are there reports already that show that the, the water test results seem to, um, those were used, I thought, to show the likelihood that those, some of those chemicals were coming from the Agent Orange. Is that correct or not correct? Um, I'd actually... <laughs> like to defer to uh, our GWA counterpart mm -hmm. that's here and, and uh, we've worked with her very uh, numerous uh, different projects and I know she came here to relay based on what GWA has, has helped in the investigation as far as groundwater and drinking water and so I, I would like to defer to Ganji if, if you don't mind uh, speaker. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Walter. Um, my name is Vanji Duhan, and I'm acting um, Assistant General Manager for Compliance and Safety. And we do the laboratory is part of our under our preview. And the um, Mr. Kemp, who is on vacation right now, before he left, I did ask him uh, what the documentations and have we been testing this. And Agent Orange is something that we have tested for a very long period of time. He said he, it has started prior to him even coming here, which was in the early 2000s. So we do have records of what has uh, been tested for our groundwater, and it has never shown up. 
uh, up to now. And we, up to the, this day, continue to test for those agents. And it has not been detected at all in any of our wells. And we uh, test for these substances every quarter throughout all of our well system. So these old um, reports that GAO made reference to back in the 80s, I think, was it? Mm -hmm. um, you're saying none of those chemicals is related? Um, I had asked him about these reports that have been there, and he hasn't seen them or um, has not done them, and so we haven't been able to do any analysis on that. What, what he was saying is that those these types of agents are all in the list of um, US EPA provides uh, gives us the list of all the things that we have to test for and um, agent orange chemicals are in those listings and we have not detected it at all in any of our wells is it the same components that you're looking for that you're looking for in the soil mike same list yeah yes all right okay um mike all right those are those are all my questions mr chair on on the the testing, but I, I want to thank you all for your efforts, and I, I do have questions on the oh. Okay. All right. If it's okay, we proceed to the PD drums. Um, all right. So as to uh, the PD drums, on August 1, there is there was an email sent to me with pictures or even a WhatsApp, I think, uh, pictures and even uh, coordinates of where this location was. It, it was, looks like an old um, Quonset hut and underneath it were old barrels. And um, so I sent that to your office and you assured me you were going to look into it right away. You had to send Mike and his team out there. And um, I, I remember um, talking to you after that because you, um, it was very stormy time. I can't remember we were having a typhoon, but it was very stormy, very rainy, and it was going to be very hard to get out there, you said, with a team and the equipment. But um, it, it wasn't, it sounds like, until, um, but as of October 22, at least my office had not had any response as to, was that something that, you know, what, what did you find there? But I want to acknowledge that on October 25, there was a press release that stated um, they gave the details of what you had been doing since August 1, and that on October 24, the Coast Guard had assisted you in testing the site. So um, I just, you know, I don't want to belabor the point. I just want to say that, you know, it didn't seem reasonable to me that it would take from August 1 to October 24 to actually find out whether that's something that we should be worrying about because people are able to access that area. And because we were having lots of rain, I, I, I'm just a lay person, but I'm thinking that's got to be running off somewhere. And I, I was concerned. So it didn't seem reasonable. And I guess if you could just talk a little bit about, is that reasonable, this time frame that we looked at? It, it never is unless you do it immediately, and I understand that. Uh, fortunately, some circumstances arose that we did, could not go out to the site immediately. But that did not inhibit us from d continuing to do our job. Our agency can, uh, reached out to the Coast Guard, and in, a, in an agreement that we have with them, that they could op open up the oil pollution um, fund to see if it's if, if it is an oil or a, a pol which is a, a petroleum oil or lubricant um if, it, if it's that type of stuff it uh, uh it's that type of contents in the drums then then they possibly could remove it if it would infect the marine environment and so that made it easy the reason we've done this agreement with the united states coast guard because it it Lessons of burden on, on Guam, to be quite honest. And uh, because they have the ability to open that fund, uh, which is a federal fund, um, they are able to do more work on a, on a quicker note. So when we first engaged with them, um, that's when there were still storms going on, both in, in Guam and, and Rhoda. And so I'm not going to speak f 
for our, our brothers and sisters in the Coast Guard, but they've also had, um, where Guam concerns itself with Guam more often than not. When Rota was hit, the Coast Guard also had to deploy out to, the, to Rota to assist them. So they were somewhat inhibited at, at, as well. Um, but even with the Coast Guard, that's, we didn't stop there. Guam EPA continued to pursue other federal avenues. Um, we, a similar site was uh, remediated by the Ar uh, Army Corps uh, of Engineers. There was a concert hut that had drums in it. They did it a couple of, uh, I believe 2012. About 2012, they did a similar project and so we reached out to them. They needed some additional information, which we provided them. When I was out in Hawaii um, a couple of weeks ago, and we were told that it would be looked at and, and the urgency that I express of it being, should be treated as a removal action. They said they, did, they would take to their management, which I had the good fortune of meeting, and that was brought up with her. The, the, the new lieutenant colonel, and she would bring it up with headquarters, which is in D.C. So um, we're awaiting word from them. We are still awaiting the analysis from the Coast Guard sampling, which they did for us, to determine what the contents of the drums are. And uh, we're hoping that'll be done in the next two weeks. So at this point, yeah. So okay. at this point, we're, that's where we're at. All right. So regarding that sampling, you, you said in the news that the contents of the drums found at the San Carlos area are not related to Agent Orange. And I'm curious how you know that without the sampling being tested yet. So, so um, Agent Orange generally comes in a specifically marked drum. Um, and I think it's basically black with an orange stripe around the middle of the drum. Uh, these drums were labeled as petroleum drums. Um, but then we can't rule out anything until the contents are, are uh, analyzed. And so um, also seeing the contents that were coming out of the drums as black and, and sludgy does not meet uh, what, what the Agent Orange uh, liquid is described as. Uh, to be honest with you, Speaker, I've, I've never come into contact or seen Agent Orange. and. Um, I'm just basing my, my knowledge on what the, the liquid looks like by what I've read and seen on video. Um, but so what we observed and what the Coast Guard and their contractors observed do not look to be related to Agent Orange. And again, because a project, a removal project that was less than a mile away, mm -hmm. that had the same scenario, a Quonset hut filled with drums, um, that only turned out to be POL, again, petroleum, oil, or lubricant uh, liquids. And so based on best assessment is, it, it probably, it more than likely is not, and it does not look like, but um, you are correct, we cannot totally rule it out until the analysis comes back. What are you testing for? Right now, so what the Coast Guard is testing for is to the black sludge, they're again looking to see if it's a petroleum byproduct, a POL. And um, I also know that when they did their field testing, they tested for, they found um, an acidic, or, or base, yeah. um, I'm sorry, um, three of the drums, th there were 62 drums, three of the drums contained a, um, a liquid substance which had a pH of, of about 10, which is on the basic side. So. Um, Basically, the what appears to be asphalt-like material with what may be sodium hydroxide are, are the two uh, uh, ingredients for laying asphalt, like when you're doing asphalt work. But did, our, but did they test for the other products we're concerned about, like the components of the Agent Orange, PCBs, <clears throat> and that kind of stuff? Was that tested? No, the samples were, samples were collected, and they, will, they were sent off to an off-island laboratory for, for their testing. And they will test for all those things. That's, it sounds like for the 2012, they didn't test for those things. 
Pardon? In 2012, they probably, no, it was not tested. Right, so but that's why I'm, and now I'm even more concerned that you're saying, it, well, it, I've read stories on the internet that they've transferred Agent Orange from one barrel to an unmarked mm -hmm. barrel, right. or they've, um, you know, just did but, different things with it, combined it with tar-looking substances, so I'm, I don't know, that was just a quick internet look that I, right. I made by myself, so I'm wondering... Could you ask them while they've got the samples to test for those things so Definitely we can, can rule that can out we, we, before we tell the public for sure that that's not there? Definitely can do that, Speaker. All right. Um, do you know who owns those barrels, how they got there, or whose site this is? Is there any liability here? At this time, uh, we are still in the process of identifying the property owner. Uh, we do have one staff who, who's doing the research, uh, going to DLM to, to make that determination and come up with the, um, the, the document that states that, you know, that person is the uh, property owner and liability falls on that person. Do you know how old the, the 2012 site, uh, how old was that product? Do they know? I mean, what are we looking at here? Is this stuff from the war or this is just recent dumping or, or what, what so, is it? So what Mike was alluding to is the contents of the drums appears to be what um, would be utilized to make roads, um, both, both the base and the tar-like substance. Now, I'm, I'm not a hiker or a four buyer, so I don't go back in that area very much. But according to Mike, there, there is some roads that were put in, I don't know how long ago. Yeah, there's some paved, there are paved roads there, and um, I believe that was during the time uh, the Navy or the or Department of Defense was using the property for whatever purposes they, they had to use it for. So that's when the roads were paved, constructed and paved. Because it, it runs parallel with the, the oil um, pipeline, yeah, the fuel pipeline. If it was their um, barrels left there and we use these particular funds to remediate the area, mm -hmm. clean it up. Does that um, take away from our kind of a balance that we can use to remediate other areas on Guam? Are, are you just, are you asking specifically for local funds or, or funds that But these Guam funds, the ones you're planning to use looks like, um, what is it? What funds you were looking at? Um, FUDs? Okay, so the FUDS program, again, is, is, is form, formerly used defense sites. That's, that's what the acronym FUDS stands for. And it's an Army Corps program that looks at sites that were formerly utilized by the Defense Department and uh, had left. So as you could well imagine, Guam has a lot of areas that are considered FUDS properties. Uh, FUDS property doesn't necessarily mean immediately that Anything on that property is originated as a FUDS project or site. So that needs to be verified on, again, as you alluded to, Speaker, the time frame of when those contaminants, if any, are, were there. So um, I would say we were fortunate in 2012 that the FUDS program actually took care of that first Quonset hut because of the paved road being there, and it looked like constituents for a paved road. So it may ne not necessarily be something from 19, uh, since uh, post World War II. Um, but if we can verify it, they, they would. Um, again, that's what their, the FUDS program is looking into this, this point in time. We've provided our, our site visit, our site report. We will provide the Coast Guard analysis and they needed to make the determination if this is a post-World War II uh, formerly used defense site or is this something that was done within the last 20 years to build the road that's adjacent to the fuel pipeline. So, um, so that's how that funding is utilized. If they have only a certain amount of funding uh, per year and uh, it's, it's, it's divvied up between Hawaii, America, Samoa, CNMI, and Guam. So we all have to lobby our counterparts in that, in that area to, to bring work to Guam. And so that's, that's basically where we're at right now. 
All right. I guess I'm the, the only reason I'm asking is because if there are other sites to clean up that yes. we could use the funds, funds yeah. for, then and if, DO, if this is clearly a DOD um, unresolved area, right. perhaps you could you know, get I, them to clean it and save your FUDS funds for another. Are there other projects on Guam that you could are, use the FUDS will, funds for? They will be commencing a project in December. They'll be out here in the second week of December to, take, to get their... Um, do the site evaluation on, on the ground and not just, you know, in Hawaii because this group is from Hawaii. Is for a particular site or for all of Guam, you're saying? Just a particular site. It's oh, where's that, uh, may yeah. I ask? Site 106, do you want to describe 106? I'm sorry. Um, the first site will be uh, up in Jigo area and that was identified as a formerly used defense site. It's just a small chunk of a uh, you know, acreage up there. So that's a start for them. And from there, we had also asked them to prioritize the Lonfit planning project, which is where these drums are. So they're going to bump that up on, on their priorities list. Hopefully uh, that can get done um, through their channels. Yes. Are there still a lot of areas that you are waiting for remediation? Investigation is correct. Yes, yes, Speaker. In fact, um, one of the things that we've we've been Discussing with the FUDs, and we finally got um, agreement to on this, this past couple of weeks um, when I was out there was that um, some of these sites that they have determined as no further action, we said, well, we want to see why you guys determined it as no further action. And so we finally got an agreement that we would start going over those as well as continue on doing the site. So like the site that Mike was talking about, site one, area 106, you know, the back gate to Anderson, basically that. And, um, and we, can, we can provide you the maps um, that we have. Th that area all the way to the coastline or close to the coastline is one area that's considered a FUDS area, 106. And so again, just because a, a, an area is considered eligible for FUDS work, any particular or specific project in that area needs to be reevaluated to determine if it was post-war use and, and if there was military use there before. Yes. All right. I was just, yeah, I would, I would, I, I want to commend you for your work and your, uh, what I think um, I've witnessed here is this, you've had to partnership with these federal agencies yes. in order to get the, them to do the testing, them to kind of pay for the remediation also. Sure. And, um, so I want to thank you for your work. I know you've had to, you know, communicate with them, probably travel, probably, you know, wait uh, for their responses in a lot of cases. And, and while we're, uh, you know, bearing on you also because we want responses. Yes. But I, I do appreciate that the relationships that you formed in order to make these things happen over the years and that your professionalism gives the, has given them confidence to, to hear you and respond. So I want to thank you at... Guam EPA for that. I just like to ask that going forward um, for these two cases, you know, for Asian Orange in general, I think, you know, because we are kind of on a hunt for this at the moment, I, and I don't want to lose any momentum, I just, to me, statements that this thing is not related to Agent Orange is, it's kind of premature because we really should Pre presuming the opposite, perhaps, right? And um, at least until we resolve that. But, but I, I do thank you for your work to clean up this area up here in PD. And what I want to know from you going forward, and I'm hoping you'll just continue like you have been doing recently to share this information with the public. I think it really helps the public to decide whether you're on their side or you're on somebody else's side and whether you're going to have our backs when it comes to contamination on Guam and you're going to protect the people of Guam or you're going to hide, you know, the evidence and, and help them in their denial of, you know, that was never used on Guam. We don't, they don't need any more help in that, I think. We, you know, we need to work the other way to see if there's just, get this resolved once and for all. Mm -hmm. But, um, but so I hope, yeah, going forward, I would just encourage you to share everything that you're working on with the public instead of them finding out later and then, and then being wondering why it was hidden from them, you know, and, 
And so I know that's not your job to just get out there every day, but I'm just encouraging you. Do you do have a public information officer? And I just think for regulatory agencies that do that, it's a win-win, I think. If the public comes along with you, we can be proud of the work you're doing. We can have confidence on whether it's, you know, um, how diligent you are, things like that. And uh, I don't know, that's just my understanding from my vantage. But uh, thank you again for all your work. Thank you, thank you, thank you Speaker. I, I just want to, um, I know we were talking about Agent Orange and, um, and also, I guess, you, um, the findings over at the San Carlos Falls. Uh, but there was also a discussion about funding constraints and, and whatnot, um, which, which I think kind of makes for a good segue to just a simple question of what is the status of the notice of violation that was issued to uh, NOVA? Uh, so um, that is still in, in negotiation. And I don't mean this as uh, maybe I could sp speak to you off, off the record, sir, but uh, we it was advised that we can't dis disclose that at this time in a, in a open format until the negotiations are completed. So how, when was this notice of violation issued? Um, I don't recall off the top of my head. You? I'm not sure, sir. Sorry, I, I can't recall. Earlier exactly. this year, last year? Earlier this year, yes. Okay. Um, so maybe going almost on 12 months and it still hasn't been resolved then? Or at least closure hasn't been brought. So, so the, the main when we when we our, when we work on NOVs, our, our main target first and foremost is is compliance, and they came into compliance a couple of months ago. Uh, now it's just a settlement of the fine, and that's where we're at. at exactly what we're going to do or how it's going to trans. So we basically that's where we're at right now, Senator. Okay. Yes, I, I, I will gladly talk to you on the side and let you know exactly where we're at. I just, I've been advised while well, this is still in negotiation, it may be detrimental if we open it up to the public until it's actually been settled. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, I don't have any questions. Uh, the speaker doesn't have any uh, further questions. Uh, so thank you very much for your presence. Uh, I understand, uh, Mr. Mead, that you wanted to make some comments. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Walter. Uh, thank you, yourself, Senator, please. for giving me the opportunity, uh, um, Madam Acting Vice, Acting Speaker. How nice! Um, I came, I came as, uh, if you will, to uh, represent uh, the folks that have been uh, uh, bringing this issue forward. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Air Force Master Sergeant Leroy Foster passed away recently, uh, and. Um, my understanding is that uh, Bill 809 did pass the Congress and went to the Senate, but the situation in, in, in Washington today and with the election next week, we don't know what they're going to do by the end of the year. Uh, I know that the GAO report that was due in November, which begins tomorrow, uh, the last I heard from Mr. Lapour was that they are waiting for the results of the testing that's been going on. And well, that's I, I know that that's what I understood anyway, uh, way back when. Uh, but the fact is that the testing and the results we have conflicting reports. One says it's they do recognize that it was here, and as far as the veterans are concerned, and I'm concerned, enough said. Um, so we have those issues, and you know, we had the resolution. The governor came out and uh, told the EPA to go ahead and get on this, and I think that was almost a year ago. And here we sit today, finally having an oversight to find out what the status is. And of course, they have to deal with the bureaucracy in Washington, and you have to deal with the US EPA. But at the same time, 
I'm a person who was affected by Agent Orange because I actually almost swam in it in the Mekong River. Three miles both sides of the Mekong River from the mouth of the, of the mouth of the river to Saigon was completely absent of any vegetation. And working on an army boat that went up and down that river every day uh, and in that river, swimming in that river, working in that river, I have all the afflictions that are presumptive afflictions that you can have except cancer. Thank God for that one. And the reason that it brings it to my mind is because it's not, a, it's not something that goes away. GWA reported to testing of groundwater. Well, groundwater today is not going to have remnants of Agent Orange. Agent Orange subjected to sunlight dissipates. They're going to find it in the sediment of Fenner Reservoir. And I like to bring up the, the, the point of Fenner Reservoir because it sits on Naval Mag. Has anyone, and no one's mentioned, of doing any testing for Agent Orange at Naval Mag? One of the places that would stand out in my mind to be some place where they would definitely have used it, especially during that time when nuclear weapons were stored there, though no one will actually admit to the fact, but it was a fact. So why haven't we tested the sediment of Fena? I remember when uh, uh, GWA would send out the water uh, sample reports. And I remember reading specifically Fena because at that time folks in Santa Rita drank that water. And there was residue of dioxins, but within the standards. There was residue of dry cleaning chemicals within the parameters of so many parts per million. And we all know that dioxin is part of the makeup of Agent Orange. I question the, the methodology because of the surface is not going to have a residue. It's going to be subsurface, surface. They're going to have to drill, take core samples or whatever it is at various sites. And it still escapes my mind why we have a person and, you know, maybe I'll just end up paying his airplane ticket here anyway. But I told Brian Moyer that even if he were to come out here to Guam to point out sites, does that mean that the EPA, DOD, US EPA would actually employ him, and I don't mean to pay him, but employ him to show them the physical sites that he witnessed storage and spraying. There are residents still alive on Guam that know where this stuff was sprayed, but they don't come forward, and, and I'm not certain why. And, 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 and so I, was asked, I asked that, and then I remember when the EPA made a report that they're limited in the sites that they're testing because of money. A while back, I filed a claim to the VA for my son. My son has a heart ailment that is associated to Agent Orange. The VA has recognized that for women service persons that served in Vietnam, it is automatically presumed that their children will be affected. This is a hereditary thing. And I filed that claim for a number of reasons. One, to test the VA, because it's not limited to just children of, 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 of females that were serving in Vietnam, Thailand, and they also recognize Korea. We have a lot of civilian employees and a lot of people that live on this island that worked on these bases for, for their entire career, be it Naval Station, Naval Mag, Anderson, Tijin, wherever. And if they were affected to any degree by Asian Orange, the chance existed, so could their children. And when you look at the presumptive ailments associated with Agent Orange, and you look at the ailments that prevail on this island, a lot of them match up. So the question could be asked, why? I'm the only person in my entire family. All my cousins, brother, everyone that has diabetes. And it's been affiliated to Agent Orange. My exposure. Why am I the only one in my family? Well, I was the only one that swam in the rivers of Vietnam. Have we tested ORDOT? 
Who originally opened ORDOT? Who is the government trying to now get to pay its fair share of the cleanup of ORDOT? The United States Navy. I ask that question because we know that ORDOT leaches into the Longfit River. Have we tested the sediment of the Longfit River? Have we tested the leaching or the, the, the runoff that comes out of, the, the, out of ORDOT for anything? It's not mentioned here. It's not mentioned as one of the sites that I know of that we've looked at. So the question is why? To me, that'd be the first place I'd start. Because the government's been known, the U.S. government's been known. They dump stuff in our oceans and they dump stuff on our land and they leave it behind. We remember when Southern High School was built. There was an area there that everything was plowed around except for this one little mound because there were a bunch of barrels there and they didn't know what was in it. I have pictures of the barrels at San Carlos. Not all of them are orange or red. Not all of them say asphalt. Some of them are so rusted you can't tell what was in them. You don't know if there's a yellow band, white band, white, blue band, or whatever kind of a band. And like you said, until it's tested, because once Agent Orange ages in the barrel, it'll start to look like asphalt. So someone needs to test it anyway. Better safe than sorry. And if you test it, my God, what happens if it's Agent Orange? End of story for everybody. And if we find, after all these years, the San Carlos site, how many more exist on our island in the middle of the jungles that we don't find? that we stumble across one day when somebody's hiking. And we don't know until we get out and do it. To me, yeah, we have a problem getting the money to do it. But on the other side of it, what's the value of life? Can you put a price tag on, on our children? Can you put a price tag on, 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 on the folks that live here that could be, probably are, affected by Agent Orange. There's no price tag you can put on that. So when it comes to the money issue or what's the priorities, to me, yes, EPA's done a lot of good work and I agree with the Vice Speaker. But at the same time, a year? When was it you said that other report came out? Three, four years, five years? I've got reports that it was on, and I, I have the same, I have my FOIA already drafted on my computer for the US EPA and two other places. It's not that difficult to do. And I have the substantiating evidence to go along with that FOIA claim. And it includes Saipan. And if the government has admitted that they stored Agent Orange on Puerto Rico, what makes them think they can tell us that it wasn't stored and used here as a way lay and a stopping point for everything that went to Vietnam. I don't think so. So thanks for having the oversight again. Uh, good luck and good luck with what you're doing. And I just hope that the next legislature has a uh, Committee on Veterans Affairs again and I hope that we stay more resolute in uh, bringing forth issues such as this to the forefront more often. And like you say, public needs to be aware. And if you can spare it, 1600 bucks. Bring Mr. Moyer out here and let him show EPA where everything is and the sites that he knows. He's a first-hand source of information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mead. And uh, with that, then we're going to go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Mr. Mead, Mr. Mead, did you uh, submit any testimony to the GAO when they were here? Yes, I did. All right. And, and I suggested to them what I said here. I suggested to them that they not limit it to the vets that were serving here that have left island, but to also uh, try and get vets that are here 
that, 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 and civilian employees. If I remember correctly, and I have a hard time remembering names, when we had the oversight, when you had the oversight hearing on a resolution, I had mentioned someone that I was hoping would show up, and he did show up, the former fireman over at Naval Station. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, the former mayor of Agate is, is a witness to the spraying. Um, I want to say John Cachocho, or is it Joe? Uh, anyway, he, he, he witnessed that also. I just wanted to check what was submitted to GAO and whether you also submitted to Guam EPA because one of the questions we've asked Guam EPA is if they have taken into consideration all the veterans' testimony and their accounts of where yeah. they think Well, I can provide to them what I gave to the GAO. All right. And that reminded me of something else. I submitted a FOIA earlier this year to Joint Region Marianas. And an FYI, and I've made this known to a lot of people, they responded with a 37-page report. Every single chemical and every single place they're spraying on this island currently. And they are spraying uh, two Monsanto products, both of which have been in the papers and in the news lately. And that's Roundup, $287 million award to a person that is supposedly contracted cancer from using Roundup. And the other is Ranger Pro. They're very similar in, in chemical makeup. And they're sprayed extensively on this island. And the reason I did that was because I watched the, uh, uh, the video when, uh, uh, when the Admiral sat right at this table and they talked about the chemicals and the spraying and the contamination of the water system uh, due to whatever they're going to do during the buildup. And right here we have the evidence that, and, and Joint Region Marianas is responsible for Anderson and for uh, uh, Nick Tams or whatever we're calling it today, and, 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 and for Naval Mag and Naval Station. They contract all of it. And currently that contractor is people that live on Guam, LMS employees. They're not military employees. They're, they're contracted to LMS. And, and they're civilians that, 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 uh, uh, that are doing this work. And when I saw them doing this, they had the respirators and the protective clothing on, and their sign says danger herbicides being sprayed. So, you know. Could I Um, could I, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Luhan, do you mind if I ask you one more question? Just, um, if you could just repeat what you said about the testing of groundwater, and you've also tested the water wells, right, so and you're saying you're tested for the same components that Guam EPA is testing in soils? And you've been doing this over the years, and you've reviewed these prior reports from the dump sites, or, or just water well reports, I, just I take water. that back. Okay. So like the water quality reports, which we mm -hmm. provide to the public every year, you get it in your um, mail if you're a GWA customer, mm -hmm. or you can find it a lot in the trash cans of the post office, right? So it's there that shows all the thing. It shows everything that has a detection, and, um, but that's not the full list of all the things that we're required to test. Uh, we get the list from US EPA, and every year they some, they, or over a period of time, they change to increase it. Um, but everything that um, are we, we are required, we do the groundwater through our wells, and that's done every quarter. And then every month we test the, dis uh, the, collection, the distribution system. So the water that comes out of the taps, we, every, throughout the island we have test points um, that cover the entire system. But we do test for all these chemicals, including the ones that are unregulated, um, quarterly within mm -hmm. our well system, with all the t 120 Pesticides. ones. Mm -hmm. I've seen reports. Um you can't find them at the moment, but that, were, that said that there were pesticides found in some of these well tests. Is that, is that, have you ever seen that? 
Um, I'm, I'm, if it's in the water quality report and there's some level of a detection, but it's within the parameters, it will be reported in the water quality report. All right, so as to the components, um, you're testing for, um, I don't know, Mike, if you could remind me, 245 or 24D, mm -hmm. and um, those things you've saying, you've found that, that the has Guam water appeared, wells right. and the Guam groundwater testing has never found anything. Correct. Have you tested the Lonfit River? Uh, GWA does not necessarily use the wrong fit river as one of our sources of water, so we don't. We we just use Ugum. So all the water quality tests that are required are also done for all of our surface water sources. Okay. So that would be um, Assen Springs, San Rita Springs, as well as um, Ugum. But I will just in my other previous life, mm -hmm. if you go to the Weary website, they did do a lot of tests for Longfit River uh, to detect what kind of effluent, what is coming out of the ORDOT landfill. And so if you go to Weary's website, yes. you'll see all the tests that were done for that. Ironically, it was the contamination of the Longfit River that started the whole uh, landfill case because yes. they said Guam had contaminated the United States' Longfit River. Mm. That then we had to take action on the ORDOT dump. Yes. So, but, um, on Weary's website, because in, um, when I was the previous administrator for the coastal program, that is one of the studies that we did ask Weary to do, is to do um, some w test on the Longfit River and what was coming out of the Liche from Ordot landfill. So I don't remember, I don't remember that it was uh, something significant, but certainly uh, it's available online or you can contact Dr. Jensen at uh, the University of Guam, Weary. Sorry, and I promised the last question. No problem. When you say you found nothing, you found zero, or you found not enough to cause a threat to humans? Uh, on Agent Orange? Mm -hmm. Yes. I, uh, gosh, I have to remember what we, how it was. I want to say that it was not detectable. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank no you, problem. everyone, for your... Thank you, and with that, then, we're going to go ahead and adjourn this oversight hearing. It is now 3.30 p.m. Thank you.